Johnny here guys, today we're talking about goggles. Now that Apple has announced their Vision Pro series of augmented reality, virtual reality, immersive experience goggles. Now they're starting to use a few new key buzzwords. It's essentially an enhanced version of a lot of the existing products on the market. But if you're wondering who would walk around wearing one of these futuristic headsets who does that? Well, drone pilots do that. Now we normally use goggles just like this to fly our racing drones around a track like we're doing tonight right here. So we're no stranger to using devices like this in order to navigate around and just have a great time. These are two examples of drone racing systems. This is a HD low latency system called HD Zero, and this is a more commercial polished product by DJI. We use goggles every single week Drones. exactly there's new technologies coming out it's gonna have VR augmented reality the new Apple Pro headset is coming out and it's gonna be premium this is made out of plastic that's made from the dollar store and yeah. even the nice DJI goggles made of lots of plastic yeah. but the Apple goggles made of diamonds it's gonna be metal oh, and lots of fancy glass they'll be nice. easy to break when you drop it oh is it and no, yeah. you know well, they're gonna make it of diamonds then. you know what the price is gonna be what is that $3,500. Holy cow. Well, that's probably like the whole PC inside of these goggles or yeah, something. I don't it's know. It's supposed yeah. to be pretty fancy. I'm wondering like why people talk about these goggles in FPV hobby. Like what's the deal? Can you like fly a drone with it or you what's the deal? You can't fly a drone with it. I, right. not, I don't think so. So it's really just a fancy display and it can put like icons. You can do your zoom calls oh, with fancy goggles. Yeah. What it does is it scans your face and it makes like an AI CGI. Oh, yeah, so it scans your your face then, oh, then avatar you're of you yeah yeah so then you have the goggles and you're looking at other people's camera and they're looking at a fake ai version I of see, you yeah, <laughs> because yeah. it can't show you with well, the goggles really fun to try for sure but not yeah. for three thousand dollars or whatever it is yeah, yeah it's kind of pricey yeah but it's kind of cool like now we won't be the only nerds sitting in parking lots wearing these yeah. Obviously. Well, you can like Neil has a VR headset. So. Yeah. So he's a double nerd. He probably even read the release notes for his goggles. In addition to drone racing, yep. you're also a big VR enthusiast. I am. Yeah. It's sort of a new thing for me. Started at the beginning of the year. Really, as like a workout regimen. Needed a way to be able to get myself to work out every day and like still enjoy doing it. So that's been kind of successful so far. But yeah, I've been now it's like six months of using the Quest goggles. I don't know four or five days a week. If you could have a better experience, yep. it would be like the maximum that someone would pay for that type of functionality like will the market bear this type of a price point ah uh, that's tough it's definitely a big jump i think i paid 400 dollars for my goggles it's like eight or nine times the price that's a big big jump you know um so it needs to be way better like way better in order i think for that you know but maybe it's also you know, I had read that like when the first Oculus came out that it was like a top tier goggle at a much higher price point than like what I paid for my like Quest 2 goggles, which is like not even the second generation. I think it may be their third or fourth generation goggles. Apple's first goggles are, you know, going to be at a high price point, I would imagine, hoping that later on some like lower price point ones come. Okay, so know. this is like the pro version. So hopefully it'll get more people interested in the technology. Yep. And then the more people that do that, the more all the other systems will have hopefully new customers that are going to be looking at their products at a lower price point. Yeah. I think though like the Quest seems to be like the most accessible and have the most games out there sure. that are easy to download. Yeah. So like even Apple's going to be playing catch up right compared to that i think what they're going to have to show at that price point is how much more what more are you going to be able to do with it that you can't do with the quest and like right. how really wearable is it say for a full work day and can you improve productivity in your like in your work life like that like to comp to <laughs> to like replace your uh your like desktop computer yeah. you know they're showing that right. a lot and i just I know even from a full day of racing, 
Um, one of the things about racing the old DJI goggles compared to an uh, analog set of goggles is they're like twice as heavy. Yeah. And we're, when we were talking about hours, yeah. you feel that weight over time for right. sure. And yeah. these are going to be even heavier. Yeah, I think that's why we all wear hats in drone racing. You see everybody with the backwards hat and you know that kind of distributes the weight of the strap across your whole head. So you may see something like that develop or I would imagine Apple's likely put a lot of work into how their strap works. It was interesting. It's like a stretchy, yeah. like accordion looking thing in the back. So hopefully they've really put some work into that. I think in order for it to be at that price point and for people to be attracted to it, it's really got to replace your normal day-to-day -day workflow on your computer. And, and like right. in order for, in my mind, for that price point to be justifiable today for like more people than just real hardcore enthusiasts. For entry level thing, I think the Quest has been great. And it's also a price point that works. So that's going to be Apple's challenge is like showing people what they can do with it to like get people in at that price point because that's that's pretty high it'd be cool to see like a marrying of those technologies but with what we do maybe augmented reality fpv flying yeah. having virtual gates yeah um, but flying real drones that'd be cool right now that technology just doesn't exist and apple could push that forward enough um, so who knows yeah. in a few years so for fpv racing pilots probably thumbs down for now yeah like i don't know why people are talking about these goggles in the fpv hobby like what's the deal like, maybe i misunderstood something i think it's just because we wear goggles and nobody else kind of does but now vr is starting to take off but oculus is only like 400 dollars. i don't believe in vr yet like where's meta like metaverse like where yeah, is that metaverse kind of lame yeah. and like like it was a hype and then it's not the hype anymore it's and like i mean it's fun if you play a game with in vr and you're like slashing zombies yeah it's like good yeah, exercise that's fun, yeah. but i don't know if i would pay three thousand dollars yeah probably not three thousand dollars that's for sure you need to also buy like insurance for these goggles too like. <laughs> yeah so this is what i was telling you how many times happened to you because it's gonna have a cable that goes to a battery yeah. The battery's not built in. Uh, so how many times happened to your FPV goggles? Oh, a lot. Where yeah. it's in your pocket, the battery, you put it down, and you get up, and you drop it onto the floor. It's all right. scary all the time, but especially here in concrete, yeah. At least these are pretty light and classic, but glass and metal, it could shatter. Like, do you remember yeah. the first iPhones? Everybody had a shot. You gotta hear, you gotta insert the remember the video when you stomp on uh, Joe Mama's uh, goggle. 90 frames per second camera. Oh, hold on, let me check my camera. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I noticed about the keynote announcement is the weight, nearly two pounds for this Apple thing. Whoa, this is heavy. There's that word again, heavy. And that's because it has a lot of computing power on board. They haven't released the resolution, but it's expected to be very close to 4K, higher than the OLED panels in this premium set of goggles. These are multi-purpose. They can connect to a video system on an HD drone on both of these examples, but they can also be used, especially this one has HDMI inputs, so you could use this to game, hooking it up to your Steam Deck, your PlayStation 5, or your computer, and use it as a monitor to practice your drone piloting simulator or just play a little bit of GTA 5 or Call of Duty. Both of these cost about $600. Now, how does that compare to the Apple Vision Pro? That's going to cost $3,500. Now you're going to get a lot of things for that. It has various cameras and sensors inside. So you'll actually be able to see outside through the cameras with them on. Now for us, as we're flying and we crash our drone, you instantly have to go like this to transport yourself back into the real world. Not so with the Apple Vision Pro. It'll allow you to have some of the data placed on top of your peripheral view. Now, from early reports like Norm from the Tested Channel, he's saying that the cameras are pretty good, but it's not quite like you're seeing it with your own eyes. It's good enough to be able to read text on things so you can navigate, maybe walk through your house, um, but there's a lot of interesting use cases I can think of, and I'm curious if they're gonna be good enough for that. Now, one of the reasons why I'm thinking you are gonna be able to walk around with them a bit is because the latency is very low. 
low. It's going to be sub 15 milliseconds. Now, I don't know if they're measuring the same way that we normally do in our drone space, but we measure glass to glass. So glass of the camera to glass of the inside of the lens, which would be the fastest time that you will need to perceive that change in motion. And we're, when we're piloting drones at about 100 miles an hour, you need the lowest latency possible. So you're going to need that in order to walk through the world without falling splat on your face. Now, one of the biggest controversial issues of this is that it seems like it could be geared for gaming, but they showed really a lot more productivity and workplace examples of it doing Zoom calls. And I don't know that many people that would pay an additional $3,500 to do a fancy Zoom call where you're presenting an avatar. You know what I did for Zoom calls? I just took a picture of myself looking down at the screen during a call and then put that on there. If you're not looking carefully enough, there's enough people in the meeting, it looks like I'm just paying attention to the zoom call pro tip for you guys now this could be a nice way for those of us that don't like to fix our hair in the morning to be presentable on zoom call as that will be putting all of your facial movements into your virtual avatar they're going to make for you but it won't see your unsightly bedhead so that could be a cool feature now the cost $3,500 I think that that could make it the most expensive device in most people's homes who's going to pay that that costs more than the Sony a7 IV camera that I'm shooting this on. It costs more than my Alienware laptop that I used to game on it. You know, unless you're a watch fanatic and you're walking around with a Rolex, this will be the most theft attractive device that you're going to see since the popularity spike of Air Jordans back in the early 90s. People were getting robbed for those and those only cost a couple of hundred dollars because of the instant recognizability of these things. If you're happening to walk through a crowded street with these, you're going to be ripe for someone sneaking up behind you because you will be immersed in the narrower view of the device itself. And you're going to have audio coming through the things. I mean, you're just kind of someone waiting to get caught slipping. So I don't recommend walking through streets with these, but maybe you could walk down the hall in your office or in your room. Speaking of that though, are you gonna be able to have these on your head all day? Drone pilots we know going out to a big race, wearing some of the DJI goggles, which are a bit heavier than what we were used to when they came out, you would start to get that fatigue on your head and on your neck from carrying that extra weight. And these are much, much heavier. How are you going to be able to deal with that through an all day staying? And if you can't actually work through an eight hour day, is it truly a productivity device? Is it an entertainment device? It's cool to have it look like you have a giant screen, but you could just buy a projector for a fraction of the cost or get a 70 inch TV or get a 32 inch monitor and just sit close to it. You know, I've been using devices like this for a number of years back a long time ago. I worked in a NASA robotics lab on the Robonaut project and we were working with off the shelf Sony glass drawn headsets that looked quite futuristic almost a couple of decades ago. And that project was very similar. And a lot of the technology that's in this Apple device, we would have killed for back at NASA all those years ago. So it really is a lot of future technology in your hands today. I really hope that even if you're not gonna be an early adopter of this device, it will drive a lot of the other players in this market, the Oculus people, anyone else that's developing a headset, it's going to now increase the visibility of this market segment. So anyone who is in these should see more people interested in VR and augmented reality, and that'll help them develop new games and new apps. Apple is announcing this a full, almost six months before the release date. Why? Because they they want developers to start developing games and apps and other things for this. They've learned since the introduction of the original iPhone that I had back in 2007. Can you believe it's been that long? They've learned from that. That what really makes one of those devices come alive is the third party app development. So they're trying to get ahead of that curve. And so you can start saving your pennies now or start arranging to sell one of your kidneys if you really want to get one. If you are planning to get one, please let me know in the comments what you're planning to do with it, how you're going to pay for it. Maybe you can get me on at your job.